Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. When it all comes down to it, there are a lot of guilty consciences among us all, aren't there? I mean, that's it, isn't it? The reason for such boisterous opposition to the church and her teachings. The never-ending secular media reports tearing at the church. The reason so many baptized Catholics hate the church and vilify her. Even among non-Catholics, there's an innate sense that the church is right in her teachings. That's because the church is only announcing the perfected form of what is already written in their hearts, natural law. Natural law is perfected in the living out of the Catholic life, but it is not necessary to be Catholic to be cognizant of the natural law. The church merely holds up our blessed Lord as the source and reason for the law. And because of that, consciences are troubled both in the church and out of the church. And this is the great drama quietly unfolding in every man and woman. Blessed John Henry Cardinal Newman called the conscience, quote, the aboriginal vicar of Christ. And so it is. The primary duty of any Catholic media outlet is to announce this primordial truth that Christ is inscribed in each man's heart, made for Christ. Anything that opposes this truth should be refuted with every ounce of energy we can muster, and that includes most especially inside the church. The simple horrible truth in the church today is that Christ has become subjective, a matter for the individual conscience. And this reality, terrifying as it is, has damnable consequences. Listen to part of an email we received the other day from a Catholic parishioner participating in a parish <clears throat> Bible study. Quote, One lady said the God of the Old Testament is mean, angry, harsh, severe, and vengeful. The women at my table all agreed and said, Forget about God, let's stick with Jesus. He didn't condemn anybody. Another woman said the Bible was a violent book. How can I read it to my kids? It's just so violent. A man said his grandchildren were attending a Protestant Bible study and were learning a lot. They had all the answers. One woman said her grandchildren were being brought up Jewish and the rituals and ceremonies were beautiful. I said to her, but they reject Jesus Christ. She said they were learning to be good people. Close quote. And for those who will seek to defend this, this case of deformation is the standard fare in parishes all over the country, all over the world. These people's consciences are deformed, and it's a safe bet that they are engaged in or supportive of some kind of mortal sin, and their consciences cannot brook the church's teaching. They stand convicted in their own hearts. Look at this picture. It's of adoration and benediction at Assumption Grotto Parish in Detroit last Sunday. If you do not accept that this is Jesus Christ, personally, truly, and substantially present, body, blood, soul, and divinity, then you are not Catholic in any meaningful sense of the word, even if you were or are baptized in the church. Our blessed Lord himself said, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life within you. And he meant exactly that. All of that and nothing else. And please, skip the Protestant garbage explanations that he meant this or he meant that. The church has taught and believed this for 2,000 years because it's true. And it was only until Martin Luther, heretic Johnny Come Lately, arrived on the scene after 1,500 years that this was seriously ever questioned. Today, more than half of Catholics reject the truth and have accepted the heresy. And they have done it because they want to live apart from the truth, denying their consciences and living in sin. Why are we pointing out all these various things? Because it is the duty of Catholic media to hold up a mirror to those in sin in hopes that their consciences will become disturbed and they will come home to the truth. Part of announcing the good news, after all, is that hell exists and the good news is that there is an escape from it, a chance at eternal glory dependent totally on our choices, and that is only achieved by and through the one holy Catholic and apostolic church established by our blessed Lord personally on St. Peter. But many inside the church today will not submit to this and are leading others astray on top of it. 
They are content to prattle on and on about social conditions and horrible injustice in what they claim is an attempt to mend the torn fabric of society. But as the saintly John Paul II said, quote, but for this mending to come about, what is needed is to first remake the Christian fabric of the ecclesial communion itself, the church, close quote. This is why we here at churchmilitant.tv never stop and will never relent in pointing out the problems of conscience inside the church. To ignore one's conscience is to ignore the Creator Himself and thus earn an eternity of torment, ignoring Him forever and hating Him forever. Too many people, leaders and lay alike in the church, have trafficked in the coin of deception and vagueness and are leading souls to hell put plain and simple. To quote John Paul again, the church herself must be evangelized anew. For some time now, we've realized here at this apostolate that the problem with the world is in actuality a problem in the church. No efforts to evangelize the culture will prove ultimately successful until the church is properly evangelized again. That's why 40 plus years after Roe v. Wade, a million children are still killed each year in the U.S. That's why the so-called pro-life generation, many of them Catholics, are so pro-gay and same-sex marriage. The rot in the culture is really reflective of the rot in the church. And as Cardinal Raymond Burke said recently in Rome, quote, Catholic media contribute in a most significant way to the work of a new evangelization, close quote. When John Paul talked about a new evangelization, he was talking specifically and directly about fallen away Catholics. And that includes those still in the church who, to quote the good cardinal again in combination with John Paul, even though they may be active in church activities, end up separating their Christian faith from its ethical requirements and fall into sin and eternal jeopardy. This is why we exist here. Each year, the programming we produce here gets close to 5 million hits around the world much of it presumably by Catholics in varying states of learning and knowledge about the faith. We are, in short, an internet powerhouse, churning out program after program, new episodes each week of our premium channel content, and a whole new lineup of premium programs each quarter. In fact, starting this coming weekend, we are bringing out three new shows. One is called Sleight of Hand, Reception, Deception about the abuse of Holy Communion in the hand, a masterful trick of some bishops around the world who brought, about this, who brought this about through deceit. Another one is conferences from this year's Retreat at Sea called Restoration, where we trace the history of the collapse of the faith and help you understand exactly what happened to threaten the immortal souls of your family and friends. And we also have another all-new offering called Baptize All Nations, where we explain in great detail over the course of 13 weeks what recent popes have actually meant by evangelization and how their desires have been thwarted by backstabbers in the Vatican. Those are three programs alone and they're available to you by signing up for a premium account and becoming a premium subscriber. Remember, it's just $10 a month. The link to sign up is on this page. And of course, we have our usual no charge offerings of Vortex and News and Mic'd Up which is quite really becoming the controversial show because of the guests and topics we air. It's, quite frankly, no holds barred. So, if we may, we'd like to ask you to consider joining and supporting our work here as, as a premium member. This is serious business. We're talking about eternity and people's eventual destiny of heaven or hell. As you might imagine, it costs quite a bit to produce daily and weekly programs to keep up with all the latest expensive communications technology, all these cameras, all this stuff to pay the staff, the studio overhead, and so forth. But we do it most cost effectively. In fact, our operating budget to reach those 5 million people per year is less than 20 cents per person. That's it. Shocking, actually, and we are mostly dependent on our premium subscribers to help us keep going. So please pray for our work here, and please consider becoming a premium subscriber. Again, the link is on this page, and the cost is less than a cup of coffee per week. Consciences must be properly formed so that the natural law may be adhered to and Christ may be discovered. Someone, some groups need to stand in the breach and proclaim the truth that helps properly form those consciences. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.